Uh, I had a bit of an error there because I forgot to put the percentage S there to pause the format. Uh, I like percentage S formatting. It's something I do. So uh, the wallet ID comes out. I'm actually going to do a little bit more uh, formatting on this one. So if wallet ID, if not wallet ID dot starts with, uh, and I'm going to do an OX there, then what we're going to now say is that uh, um, message dot send is that doesn't look like a bad ID. Expecting OX lots of hex. Uh, and really, we want that MetaMask, MetaMask there, and I'm not going to bother putting the, what I got back, but just say that there. That doesn't look like a vibe wallet. Okay, so now someone sends me, and also at this point, I'm going to return so it just finishes. I don't like functions which have lots of return points, but as this is a bit of a script, um, it's kind of okay. So let's go return there and just exit out. I would normally try and use like an exception here, but I, I don't want to use an exception because I don't have another system. So what I'd do is put this all into a sub function, have the control mechanism, catch the exception and return. Um, but I just, I just can't be asked, right? Not for this kind of scripty thing. So we've got the wallet ID now. We've got the Django username, which is message, uh, uh, message dot author, uh, which I'm going to stir that uh, just to make sure that it's all nice, and we're going to give uh, the um, the wallet ID over to this associate wallet. So the way that actually works, or the previous uh, time I mentioned this, is because this is going to be a synchronous function, hasn't got the word async in front, is I'm actually going to use um, oh, um, <laughs> await sync to a sync spelled correctly it's going to be called the the private function which is associate wallet and it's going to call the thread safe bit as well which is up here thread sensitive to not thread safe like that get rid of my extra comma that i just added in and my extra bracket and then the the, the two arguments go into a separate function behind it um, so this actually acts like a decorator, it's actually returning a thing which is safer to run. Um, and then at this point, um, I'm going to just mention back just print something happy. Just just go for it. Uh, we'll worry about what happens to the return codes at the moment. Um, but that's that's the basic start of this. Uh, with this in place, we start JMONs over here. You see my wallet ID was actually printed off there. So I'm just going to send the same message again. There's a lot of doing the same message. When I do my, my development, I try and do it in a different um, server. Um, you see here that the wallet has been associated. Uh, I do it in a different server on a private message so I don't have to worry about spamming all my friends with loads and loads of the same thing over and over again, trying to debug some minor thing in there. Um, now we get on to the actual fun stuff. So what we've got here is we've got a Discord user and we've got uh, a wallet ID. Okay, so if we just cancel that and do that again, just so I see what those are. Uh, they should come up as like a, 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 a numeric thing. Um, so it should be, yep, I've got Dansan23828, which is my Discord user, and we've got 03BO, which is my MetaMask wallet ID. So we get to look at the models now, and for models, I'm actually going to split the screen here. Um, and so I'm just going to make sure this all works nice and developing. From models, we've got person, we want Discord user, and we're also going to want wallet um, in those orders. So Arguably, I put them in alphabetical order. Should we do them in alphabetical order? So the first question is, does the Discord user exist? So, so does does this Discord user exist? So Discord dot user, Discord user dot dot objects dot get. And at this point, uh, get will throw an exception if it's not there, which is good. So we're going to say Discord ID, Discord ID equals Discord user. DU equals this, try. Um, I'm going to assume the exception at this point. There are exceptions it could be here, which are, it could be an exception like uh, the database isn't connected. Uh, if the database isn't connected, then, then we've got other problems here. 
Um, but yeah, that is that is the issue here. So at, at the moment, we're just going to have to um, worry about what we have got. So the database the user isn't connected. It doesn't exist. So we can say do you equal Discord user. Like that. Make a brand new one. Du dot Discord ID equals uh, Discord user. We don't have any other information about this user right now. I guess I could go and find out their actual display name, but uh, at the moment I only care about doing that. I could have passed that into the argument. I could actually even pass the original message into here to have a reference there. Um, I'm not going. I'm just going to keep it this at the moment. And then du dot save. So we now have a, a du object. So the first bit's done. The next question is: Does a wallet exist? Um, and the question really here is: uh, If the wallet exists, oh. A bit warm in here. If the wallet exists, it's the same thing basically. So it's be a try um, wallet equals wallet dot objects dot get, and I believe this one's going to be eth address. Eth address equals wallet id, and um, except again, I'm going to just assume the assume the exception here. Quick and dirty. I know uh, you wouldn't do this in the professional world, but you know wallet equal this wallet dot object uh, dot so wallet wallet dot um, f address equals wallet id um wallet type equals uh, so wallet dot wallet type equals unknown I'm gonna put unknown I, I didn't make it deep I didn't make it um, blank equals true so I'm gonna put it as unknown We'll come back and worry about that lecture. Then we'll do wallet.save. Now the question, the moment, next question is, does the person exist? So if the person exists, it could exist by one or two routes. Uh, if there's a person, let's say I'm doing this for myself, I could have a JT person, but actually that JT person is linked to either the wallet or the Discord user, and therefore I, I wouldn't know it's the same person. So fundamentally my question now is, does that person it does the Discord user um, does the Discord person exist? Um, if they do, there's a potential of someone trying to steal someone's wallet ID, um, and it, it 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 seems crazy to try and steal someone's ID because if I want to give you some money and you've given me someone else's ID, they're going to get the money, right? There is a potential DOS attack you could do here where you've uh, stolen their ID and therefore they can't register it, but they're going to message me when they try to register. So, yeah, I, I don't think this is a big attack vector I need to worry about. So the first person to register a wallet is the person it goes against. So this Discord person is going to be Discord user dot person. And the wallet person equals wallet person no wallet dot person sorry wallet okay if there, there's three use cases here okay if discord person and wallet person and wallet inside this one they're both set if discord person if the wallet person is already set and the Discord person is not, we can now register. Can we register? We can't register because it may not do it. So if the wallet person is already set, if the wallet person, we're going to return. I'm going to put the message I want to send back to the user in here. So back at the top here, I can actually put um, um, a reply equals this and just put the reply in there. So in this situation, if the wallet person is, the wallet already has a person. C Danson. I'm Danson, in case that wasn't clear. I think I've mentioned it in some previous videos where I messed my name up, I'm Danson. Um, Fundamentally, if the wallet person already exists, that now means, and the great thing is I've already saved this Discord user in place, and I can look back at the logs and work out who, who is trying to register and what. 
uh, but we now have a Discord person, uh, we have a wallet person. Um, what we want to do, if the Discord person is set, uh, this has already returned. At this point, now just link wallet to person. So we say wallet.person equals Discord person. In fact, I'm going to get rid of these here to save myself. wallet.save and we can do return wallet associated however neither have a person so at this point we're going to do person equals person and the person object is our first thing it has a name it can be blank so I'm just not going to worry about the person object but name right here but I might just put person dot name equals dis equals uh, discord user, and I can come back and fix their real names later by hand somehow. The discord user, uh, and at this point I'm actually going to come through and change their name here. I'm going to say person dot save. I can do wallet dot person equals person, and I can do wallet uh, discord uh, user. Sorry, it's du. Not Discord user, it's du, Discord person, du, du equals dot person equals person, do wallet dot save, du dot save, return wallet associated. And I believe that's all my options. I believe that's the function built out with these functions. Um, Job done, all in one go. Now the question is where it's going to work or not. Uh, always a little bit of a worry there. Um, going to give us some blank lines there. Uh, that should be two lines though. That should be two lines because yeah, style. So I'm going to cancel this. We start. I've got some print lines in here that I don't necessarily want. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do very quickly. This has it in, so I'm going to go back here. Uh, Uh, just because I'm going to want that open in a second. Uh, Localhost 8000 uh, slash admin. So we have this open here. You can see there aren't, uh, there is a person in here right now, it's PKJT. Um, uh, and then in here as well, we've got some Discord users. There aren't any Discord users yet, and there are not any wallets yet. Okay, so in theory, if I now register my wallet against this database, I can now run that command whilst watching this very carefully, while watching this very carefully, and see how many errors I get. And I didn't get any whatsoever, and I got the word wallet associated coming back. See, I got lowercase a, it's a different one to the previous one, so how we bit the server. At this point, I should now have a second person should be invented, Discord user object number two, which is interesting there. It's interesting his name came back, not what I was expecting, because I probably changed from Discord user to DU, and that was a mistake. Uh, in wallets, there is now a wallet in here, which doesn't have an alias, and that is the wallet ID, which is mine. And I should also now have a Discord user, which doesn't have a display name and doesn't have anything there. And because of that, there's a bit of a bug there around the list items. If I go back to my code very quickly, in models, well, this is a mistake which is quite easy to make actually. So in Discord user here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the PK and I'm also going to put the Discord ID. They should always have those things. Uh, because I put two optional fields in there, uh, that should reload already. I reload this page, I now can see things I can actually click on. So if you only have blank fields, there's nothing to click on. So leaving the PK in can be can be a very essential. So there you go, there's my user object and it's all linked together. So this user has a person object. Uh, I am just going to change that, that 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 function here. So that should be Discord. No, that should be Discord. Uh, that's correct, that's correct. That should be Discord user to actually be the string version of that user name. And that's it, that's my register function done in one go. Uh, so if I now try to register a second time uh, here, 
Uh, so let me just stop because this the thing we've got to remember is they don't stop and restart every time you do it. So if I try to register this now, it's going to say it failed. Okay. Well, there's a person who downstand. It says he downstand because I coded it, not because downstand is the person who's already registered that wallet. So at this point, I'm not going to get duplicate entries, and also I should not have any extra rows in here. So in wallets, I don't have any extra rows. In Discord users, I don't have any extra rows, and in person, I don't have any extra rows. Um, I I don't really want to be this user, so I'm just going to go and fix my user in here. I can now come into here and set and change this to be actually being JT. I can go back into Discord users and change my Discord users being to being um, uh, the, the the person associated with this. It's going to be JT as well. Okay, job done. We use display name. Right, there we go. Uh, so now I've got my nice user set up. Um, job done, nice and short, uh, very easy to, to, to now interact with database models inside of this framework. Um, as I say, I really liked Django models, I really like how it, it comes together really fast here. I am a bit weird, I just did something off the bottom of the screen, we will go back in there, that's all the code in there. Uh, nice and simple edge cases. There is some risk with this about people coming and registering lots and lots of this wallet IDs, uh, but they'll have to have a different Discord user for every ID, and I know you could bot that. You can make bots to come and talk to me and register lots of IDs. That's not necessarily going to be a benefit, um, uh, and there are ways to detect that's happened, and, and I'm not just going to blindly give away NFTs to everybody. Um, although I am going to try and encourage other people to give away NFTs, um, I'm going to give them to a group of people, and they're going to hopefully spread those things out, and or sell them, you know, for all I care. So that's it for today. If you like this, um, please, 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 please uh, feel free to um, hit like and subscribe. Um, one of the things that we do have is a new Discord channel, hence we're finding a Discord bot. There is a um, URL for that, which I came to look up, which is tinyurl.com forward slash invite hyphen Discord, which is not a Rick roll. I promise you it will let you into our Discord. So if you want to join in, go there. The register function may not be live when this video goes out because I haven't yet done the video of me uh, putting it into Docker and deploying it. So I'm going to actually do a release process for this now. Now it actually does something, I'm going to Dockerize it and release it and it's going to run a little server, which is just a little pie which sits here. Um, so hopefully that will be in the next video where we actually do that Dockerization containerization and have that set up. So this is a full project all the way through. So there's two videos already talking about the framework part of it. This is the first video we've actually done something in. Uh, and the next thing is going to be about deploying that and making that really nice uh, from my end. Uh, I'll probably use Fabric to deploy it because um, I like Fabric. Um, but I might use something else. I don't know. Hmm. Um, so yeah, that is where we are right now. So if you like this, please hit like, please hit subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, and yeah, hopefully if... The, if if that entry is not online when you join the Discord, don't worry, he will be online and then register your ETH wallet there to get uh, the giveaway. It's coming up soon. It's coming up when we hit 255 subscribers and I believe we're at 236 right now. We are going up every day and I want to thank you all for doing this and thank you all for spreading the good word because it really means a lot to me. Uh, so that's it for now. Thank you very much and I will see you all in the next episode.